I'm David Cosgrove. I'm an Emeritus Professor of Clinical Ultrasound at Imperial College and King's College, both in London, England. Well, it is a rapidly de developing, advancing uh, subject, um, and it's actually a little difficult to pick out just one topic, but one that's really important is what's known as plane wave imaging. Um, and in this technique, which is, is different from the conventional way to make an ultrasound image, which is to send pulses into the tissue, line by line by line, so maybe 100 or 150 lines, and collect the signals from each line, one at a time, and gradually build up the image line by line in that fashion. That's the traditional way that we've always used. And in the plane wave technique, instead of sending a focused uh, pulses like that, you, you, you activate all the elements in the array and send a, an unfocused beam that, as it were, floods the entire section that you are wanting to look at. And then you collect all the echoes on all the, ele all the elements, might be two, five, six elements, could even be five, 12 elements. Um, <clears throat> and then using fast computers, and that's really the, the, the linchpin of this method. It couldn't be done before fast computers were, were available. Using fast modern computers, um, you can then generate the image in one shot. So now instead of having 50 frames per second, you can have 2,000 or 10,000 frames per second. And you may say, well, 10,000 frames per second is too many. We don't need that many. And that is, of course, true. Um, <clears throat> but there's always a, a, a to and fro in these, in these matters. And if you have a very high frame rate, you can use that to do things like improve the image quality by sending more than one uh, uh, more than one plane wave uh, down each direction at a time. Um, and um, in, in some areas, like Doppler, it's proved to be extremely useful. At the moment, <clears throat> the only, only valuable clinical implementation of it is in another technical development in ultrasound um, called elastography. And that elastography is a, a method for measuring the stiffness of tissue, which is, of course, what the doctor does when he palpates a tumor or a, a fetus or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so in, in the elastographic mechanism that uses the plane wave approach, um, <clears throat> a pulse, and, and now this is a really a focused pulse, pulses are sent down one line, um, and then the plane wave approach is used to look at the shear waves that those, we call them push pulses, that the push pulses create. Um, <clears throat> the shear waves travel away from the direction of the push pulses, and the, the, the trick is, the, the, the secret to it, is that the uh, shear wave speed is related to the stiffness of the tissue. Stiffer tissue conducts the shear waves faster. So if you use plane waves to measure the <clears throat> disturbance of the shear waves, you can measure their speed, you can convert that into the stiffness of the tissue. Um, but, uh, and and that's, a, uh, that's now a commercial application. You can, you can buy a machine that does that um, using, using plane wave uh, technology. Um, other ways that are going to be important, I'm sure, are going to be with, um, with Doppler um, and uh, also, importantly, with contrast agents. And the, the thing that's going to be special, one thing that will be special about the contrast agents using plane waves is that um, uh, 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 the microbubbles, which are the agents used for ultrasound contrast, are very fragile. And so in order to preserve them so that we get a reasonable duration of the enhancement from the contrast after, for example, an intravenous injection, um, we have to turn the transmit power down and use what we call a very low MI, mechanical index, and that makes the images inherently noisy. Now, with a plane wave approach, you don't have that focus, so it's a uniform insonation across the entire field, so the bubble destruction will be reduced, and so we may be able to have work with higher MIs and get less noisy images as well as the fact that the, the, the freedom to use m many, many pulses will also improve the, uh, the, the, the quality of the contrast images. So it's, it is really a very important technique, um, and I think we'll see it more. Eventually, I predict it will take over the entire field. There are people who've used mobiles and actually more small uh, tablets as a, 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 a calculating engine to some extent, because they've got quite powerful computers in them now, um, and as a display, a portable display for point-of-care ultrasound. Um, but it's a minority area, and, and most point-of-care systems are, are dedicated, and they're, they're not multi-multifunctional. Um, 
Of course, you can use mobile phones or tablets um, for, uh, for communication of ultrasound results. Um, and that's an interesting area that in some parts of the world has been used a little bit. Um, and it also is a, a tricky area because there's a concern about patient confidentiality. And that's really quite hard to deal with, with, with data being sent about over, over the ether. Yeah. So it hasn't really made a, a, a big impact in ultrasound up to now. You know, ultrasound is a strange subject in a way. Um, a, a, a lot of um, radiologists particularly, and not so much in this part of the world, I'm glad to say, but uh, for example in the States, in the USA for instance, they don't regard ultrasound as being a very important discipline at all. And yet, now it's the most widely used imaging technology in the world. There are more ultrasound scans done per day in the world than, for example, even plain x-rays now. So it's exploding. The, the, the usage is take, taken up very, very strongly, um, and particularly in the, in the less well-off parts of the world where CT and MR are, are less, well, less available. It's become the absolute standard, and I suppose China is the most striking example of that, um, where the, the whole way that ultrasound is performed is different from anywhere else in the world, in that it's not radiologists who perform ultrasound, it's ultrasonologists. So they're doctors, and they specialize in ultrasonography. And they do all, across the board, all, all types of, of, um, of sonography they will, they will undertake, including interventional, um, and obstetrics, and cardiac, and the whole, the whole spectrum they'll, 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 they'll uh, tackle. Um, and they use ultrasound, and this was a government decision m many years ago, to exploit the, the um, fact that ultrasound is very cost effective. So they made a deliberate, a deliberate decision to foster ultrasound in China. Well, we've almost touched on that, um, <clears throat> and, and it is extremely important. Um, training is, is, is key to making good diagnoses. It's not only ultrasound, for which that's true, of course. It's across the board. Every imaging discipline needs training. But, uh, but in ultrasound, <clears throat> there's a, 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 a special aspect because it's a very practical technique. So in a way, it's quite like a clinical examination of the patient, say the abdomen, for example, um, or the nervous system. Uh, and the, the, the person doing the ultrasound actually has to physically touch the patient with the probe and, and, and create the images as, they, as they're working um, right there with the patient in front of them. So it's more like a clinical examination, but much better because it goes deeper and, yeah, and, and, and sees much more about what's happening inside the patient. Um, so because of that, there's a manual skill involved. <clears throat> and that's the part that is especially, in, especially needs good training, and it can't be done quickly. Um, <clears throat> it's actually quite a, a treacherous discipline in a way. If you ever see an ultrasound scan done by an expert, it looks really easy. They just put the probe on and up comes the image and then the diagnosis comes up and it looks really easy. But actually that facility it has been acquired over years of practice, hands-on practice and training, um, and it's not, not that easy to learn. Um, so it is a, a particular aspect of ultrasound. Training is really, really important. And in fact, in this meeting this week, um, <clears throat> one of the speakers at the, at the beginning was talking about the, 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 the goal of the um, 69th IRIA, which is to emphasize the, the way that radiologists are clinicians. They're, they're medical doctors, and so their, their, their opinion is really, a, 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 it should be a, a wise, clinically-based opinion. Um, and um, that's, that speaker also said that unfortunately in India, there's been a trend um, for radiologists, a little bit like I was saying earlier about the American uh, uh, viewpoint, a little bit of a trend away from <clears throat> taking ultrasound seriously and, and spending the time to learn how to, how to make it work well for, for our patients. So that, that's a little bit of a, a, a worrisome turn, and I hope that won't continue. The worst safety problem with ultrasound is making a wrong diagnosis, which is, of course, true of any, any imaging or any, any diagnosis of any sort. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, ultrasound itself seems to be at the powers that we use, seems to be very safe. But we do have to remember that when you put ultrasound energy into a patient, you are changing things physically in the patient. Um, and there is a, a, an important part of ultrasound, which is called HIFU, which is high 
high, high power focused ultrasound. And this is used for therapy. It's a, it's a form of, of interstitial heat therapy, rather like RF or microwave ablation. <clears throat> and uh, uh, that's the same ultrasound as we use for diagnosis, but very much higher powers. Um, so uh, we do need to, to keep the power down. And all machines now have a, have a power uh, 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 marking. They mark the, um, the mechanical index or the thermal index. And as long as you keep below those, you, you, you're, you're OK. Every society has guidelines. Um, the FDA in the States issues guidelines about, um, uh, after consultation, of course, about the power levels that should be, should be allowed. So yes, there, there are. And I think every nation respects the same, the same numbers.